다음은 우리가 잘 아는 고든 창 박사입니다. 고든 창은 국가정보위원회와 CIA, 국무부, 또 미국 전략사령부, 국방부 등에서 수많은 브리핑을 하면서 동북아 정세에 관한 중요한 정보를 알리고 있는 아시아 정세, 특히 한국의 한국 문제의 전문가입니다. 중국과 현대 문명에 관한 평론가이고 저술가로도 잘 알려진 고든 창의 저서가 있는데요. 2019년 3월 인카운터 북스에서 발간된 소책자 국가 정체성 상실 사라지는 대한민국이 있고 또한 랜덤 출판사를 통해 핵 결전 세계를 향한 북한의 도전과 중국의 붕괴라는 두 권의 책을 출판했습니다. 그는 현재 각종 텔레비전 채널, 미디어 채널에도 자주 등장, 등장하며 존 배철러 쇼의 정기 공동 호스트이자 게스트로도 출연하고 있습니다. 워싱턴에서 역시 워싱턴에서 컴퓨터 하드웨어를 통해 사이로 총선 부정에 개입한 중국이라는 제목으로 발표를 해주시겠습니다. 마이크를 워싱턴의 댄 고든 창에게 넘깁니다. Thank you, Mr. Men. Many have worked tirelessly to put this, this year's KC PAC, in place. And I want to thank everyone at the New Institute, at the One Korea Network, and the American Conservative Union. Your relentless determination to safeguard liberty and democracy is an inspiration to us all. I wish I could be with you in person at this moment, which is critical in the history of Korea. President Moon Jae-in's Democratic Party of Korea and its ally, the Platform Party, together won 180 of 300 seats in the National Assembly during the 21st general election on April 15th. That's 57 more seats than they held in the previous National Assembly. Now, in the run-up to this election, President Moon was generally unpopular and his approval ratings were low. So how did Minju, as the Democratic Party is known, how did it do so well in the voting? Well, it almost certainly cheated. And it almost certainly cheated with the help of China. Moon sent Yang Zhengchou, who is the president of the Democracy Institute, which is Minju's think tank, he sent him to China. He sent them to China to work with the Communist Party of China and probably Tencent, the internet giant. Tencent helped with artificial intelligence and big data. And from all the accounts, this collaboration produced the algorithm that was used to manipulate the results of the April 15th election. Also, we know that South Korea bought equipment from a company that had a close relationship with Huawei Technologies, the Chinese telecom equipment manufacturer. And in addition, Huawei supplied servers to South Korea's election commission. Now we know that this is more than just a theoretical risk. China for a half decade from 2012 to 2017 every night surreptitiously downloaded information from the China donated headquarters of the African Union in Addis Ababa. And China did that through back doors that were implanted in Huawei servers that were in the headquarters. As a result of all this, it appears that in South Korea, Huawei and others conspired together to manipulate the results of the April 15th election. We know that there was manipulation because statistical analyses show that there were abnormal voting patterns. Now, of course, this is ironic because China's Communist Party, which does not allow elections in China, has certainly become the master of manipulating elections in free societies. And that is why the April 15th election in South Korea is so significant. And we'll talk about that significance, and we'll start with South Korea. First, we know that Moon 
in the April 15th elections received uh, an absolute majority in the National Assembly. Even better for Moon, he has now a three-fifths supermajority, and that prevents the opposition from blocking the bills of the ruling party. Fortunately, Moon does not have a two-thirds majority, and that's relevant for amendment of the Constitution of the Republic of Korea. The Constitution provides that the president can propose amendments to the Constitution. Article 130 says that there must be at least a two-thirds vote of the members of the National Assembly in order to start a popular referendum to approve the constitutional amendments. Now, in that popular referendum, all that is needed is a simple majority. We know what Moon would do if he could amend the Constitution. He would merge South Korea into North Korea, into the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, the Kim regime. Now, Moon, because he's counting the votes, especially because he's counting the votes in the referendum, probably would be able to get his majority. So all of this means is that what stands between a democratic South Korea and a totalitarian state that Moon wants, all that stands between that are three votes in the National Assembly. Because the conservatives, United Future and Future Korea, the conservative parties together have 103 seats. Now, we can recall that Moon, Moon's party, in early part of 2018, and Tara Oh, who will be talking to you later, is an expert on this. We know that in early 2018, Moon's party tried to amend the South Korean constitution to remove the concept of liber liberality from the notion of democracy. Conservatives, fortunately, were able to turn back the effort. But now the Republic of Korea is hanging by a threat, three votes. Now, we cannot afford, we who live in free societies, cannot afford to lose any democracy, especially one as important as South Korea. So given what's happened in Korea on April 15th, and ever since Moon took office in May 2017, we know that South Korea is no longer a democratic state as we would de define it. It has become authoritarian and it's fast sliding to totalitarianism. So people who want to save their democracy now are finding it increasingly difficult to do so after April 15th. Because after April 15th, they've been shut out of the National Assembly. Which means if they want to protect themselves from Moon, they want to protect themselves from the ruling party, what they have to do to protect themselves and their society is take to the streets, their only option. We know that the people of South Korea have taken to the streets in big numbers recently in Seoul, in defiance of their government. That's the only means left open to them. Yet, what we're seeing that happened on April 15th affects more than just South Korea. It affects all democracies. Elections are the heartbeat of democracies. And what we have seen is that Moon, with the help of China, was able to manipulate the results. They were able to do that in real time, in the middle of an election. If Beijing gets its way and is able to keep its preferred candidates in Korea's National Assembly, we know that they will try this elsewhere. Matter of fact, they'll try it everywhere. So think of the possibilities. Dan Schneider talked about democracy in America. Right now, Americans are concerned about the fraud that can occur because of the mail-in ballots in my state, New Jersey, and other states as well. And yes, mail-ins are fraud friendly, but let's also remember that the real fraud on November 3, election day in the US, could very well take place on all those electronic voting machines that we use in my state and throughout the country, because they can be manipulated by China from a distance 
South Korean style. So the question is, what is the best way to delegitimize a democracy or to delegitimize democracies in general? The answer is to destroy faith in the voting process. Beijing just did that in South Korea, and we are wor worried that given the chance, it will do that around the world. The Communist Party, therefore, has found another way to make itself an existential threat to the concept of representative governance. And on the topics of threats, we're talking about a takeover of South Korea by North Korea and China, because that's who Moon owes his allegiance to, not to the people of Korea, South Korea, but to North Korea and to Beijing. Now, this also has implications for the rest of the world. Let's start with the United States. Since the end of the 1900s, the United States has drawn its Western defense perimeter, not off the coast of Hawaii, but off the coast of East Asia. And the Korean Peninsula at the northern end of that chain anchors this crucial defensive line. What Moon has done, he's put that all at risk. And that means it jeopardizes not only the security of the United States, but also the security of its allies, its friends, and of course, the free world. So let's remember something. Moon Jae-in, with the help of China, just stole an election. And they will steal elections until they are stopped. <clears throat> and if they don't, or if they're not stopped, they will destroy the concept of democracy around the world. So what do we need to do? We need to hand back those seats that were stolen in the National Assembly election on April 15th to the people who actually won those contests. And we need to imprison those people who rigged the election. So let's imprison those people and let's do one other thing. Let's say to the people of the world, that saving democracy in South Korea is saving democracy for all of us. Thank you.